All that I'm saying is we about to roll with the time. Hey. Well, what is up, everybody? Christian Ballard here with Ballard Sports Media coming at you live on a Monday night. Won't be on here too long. I'll go ahead. I do want to just kind of talk sports, hang out with you guys for a bit. Um, you know, I, I, I know, like, maybe some of y'all frown hangout streams here or there sometimes. I know I try to – I've been trying to work and, and put some more effort into getting actual videos out uh, for you guys. So – just been kind of grinding with that, but grinding with school and everything, uh, which is most important. And I'm going to actually, I'm going to share something with you guys. Look, look at this. Hold on. Not that, not that one. Hold on. Wrong one. Share screen. Let's go here. Look at this. You, I, I don't know if y'all see this. Two hours and one minute. Something is up with StreamYard. Because I've only been on here 30 seconds, maybe. That That's ridiculous. What What is this? Well, what's going on here? That's messed up. I don't know. But it, it says that on here. I don't really care. Um, quite, quite honestly. Uh, it's just kind of... It's kind of crazy, in my opinion. But, uh... That, that's weird, man. Um, but yeah, I love you guys. I love talking sports with y'all. And uh, I just figured I'd go live. If anyone does show up, you know, that's great. Feel free to. Uh, I went ahead. I dropped the StreamYard link. Or actually, hold on. I didn't. 736. My computer is screwed up with time right now. Now, it says it is 9.38. That is correct. 9.38 Central Time here in Alabama. That That's messed up. Um, But look at this. 7.3. I dropped that two minutes ago. Oh, you, can't, you can't see the time. But if you look at the comment section, or at least what I'm looking at, it says 7.36. I'm like, well, what the hell? Is going on here? That's just ridiculous. Um, you know, I mean, holy cow! Anyway, um, so some good games upcoming this week for. Uh, college football, we got the Gator Swamp, you know, going to be packed, I'm sure. Um, what's up, Nana? Says she's got 9.36. Yeah, I, my phone and computer both say 9.39. I mean, a couple minutes ahead, but I mean, I mean it, it's around 9.40. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to share a screen real quick. Let's look at some games. Ah, oh, crap. Let's see. Look at this schedule here. Um, so, let's switch over. We're in week three of FBS play. Some great games. UGA 56-7 over UAB. Bama 48-14 over Mercer. These are these are interesting. Um, and we'll click on some of these and look at them. Ohio and Louisiana could be interesting. Uh, Louisiana. Louisiana is a really good team. Raging Cajuns, they've been ranked in recent years. Like what they're doing with the program. Um, they play at Cajun Field. They play in Lafayette. Hold on one second. Um, I like uh, I like what Billy Napler is doing. They're one of the better teams in the Sun Belt Conference. They're in the Western Division. 
Um, Ohio uh, is also a really good team, too. They just uh, came off. I mean, they're 0-2 right now. They're fourth of the MAC. But they've, I mean, for the MAC, and everything, they've, they've been an okay team. They have a new head coach, though, in his first season, Tim Albin. Uh, when you look at it, um, my nana says, looking forward to the wideout at Penn State with Auburn. Can we expand on that? Yeah, I, I'm definitely going to get to that one in a second. But just looking at some of these games real quick, um, UCF, we know what they've done. Louisville, if you ask me, I'll take Louisiana over Ohio. Um and that uh, UCF at Louisville, that's an interesting game. I'm actually curious what the spread is because this is not a sleeper game. It favors UCF a little bit more, 16 and a half, Louisville at 39 and a half, but it's only a touchdown favorite. Um, UCF is one and one against the spread. Louisville is O and two against the spread. My man Trenches doesn't miss a beat. Brad, what's up? Not much, man. Figured I'd hop on here, just playing some Madden, relaxing. Yeah, who you playing as? Uh, Falcons. They got to win one game, right? Right. <laughs> is it uh, is it the new twenty two one? Nah, it's twenty one. Ah, no Kyle Pitts. <laughs> no, I don't think it matters. Did you, to be honest with you? Uh, so no fourth overall tight end. <laughs> no fourth overall, man. I'm actually going to switch it up, man. I'm going to take Carolina this, this time. Cool, man. So what yeah, you going this, on, We're just kind of looking at some games. This UCF-Louisville game in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, the Knights are favored by seven. This could actually end up being an interesting game because UCF's kind of took a downfall. But now, actually, I mean, they – you know, they got Gus Malzahn as their head coach. Um, he could be cooking some offense up. It looks like he had a 36-31 victory over Boise State. I'm not sure exactly who BCU is, but they scored 63 points. So, um, you know, on the year, they already got almost three, uh, 400 passing yards. Yeah, I mean, I think, it's a, I think it's an interesting game. But here's my question to you, man. How do you feel about them joining the Pac-12? UCF? Yeah. I mean, I just think they need to prove a little bit more that they can compete with teams like that before anything. I wouldn't be against them joining the Power Five, but if they're going to go from Group of Five like that to to Power Five, they need to they need to show some improvement and, and just show that they can, uh, you know, let, just compete a little. You know bit. that they're they're in the vote right now, right? Are, are you serious? Are you trolling me? No, I swear to you, them, I forgot, it's like five teams, but oh they're not God. even the best team going in. It's Cincinnati's in that vote. In the Pac-12? Or the I'm pretty team? sure it was Pac-12. Let me look it up. Let me, I don't want to be giving you false information. Let me turn this camera off real quick and look it up. It's not like it's I not see. like SEC where it's a done deal. It's one of those, it's like, all right, here we go. Uh, three days ago, Big 12 expansion, how adding BYU, Big Cincinnati, 12. Houston, and UCF may alter the college football. So it's BYU, Cincinnati, Houston, and UCF. See, that's that's what I heard the other day. I remember that article. Dennis yeah. Dodd put it out. Um, it was the Big 12. He kept saying the Pac-12. That, that's, oh, what got me mixed yeah, up there. that's what yeah. got me mixed up there. I got you. That's my fault. My if it's not it's really he's bad. about he's about to jump in like on the stream or what say whatever you want to nana <laughs> yeah i take i take ucf in this louisville game but i think i think it's going to be a, a somewhat low scoring i think they play it close the spread is 7 i'm going to take a bold claim eh. give me Crap, I don't know. 28-24 UCF. I don't think they cover. No, they're not covering. Um, I, 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 man, that's a tough one to pick, dude. Because Louisville it is the same as Lamar. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you good, man? Yeah, I'm okay. All right. You got silent on me for a minute. Let's see. That's... Week two, uh, week two. I don't. 
week two is in the books. Georgia blew UAB out. Who who they played? Oh, what? What about a? Did that Arkansas Texas game surprise you at all? Uh, all right. So I picked Texas to win. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not shocked, man. I've been saying it all off season. You can go back to my videos. The Arkansas with Pittman's taking a huge step forward. Right. Um, not saying they're going to be great, but I think they have the potential. Let's just. I mean, hear me out before you start ragging on this. Yeah, we don't know a lot about Ole Miss yet. Fair. We see Texas and them struggle winning. Yeah. Could Arkansas potentially be the second best team in the West right now? Ooh. You know that oh this will be fun. Hell yeah. They you know, okay, they very much could because like you said, A and M struggling a bit. We don't know much about Ole Miss too much yet. We gotta see what it looks like. That's that's a bold claim. Uh they might actually be. And it we're and I'm not saying they are, but yeah. I think there's a chance they could be. Yeah, but we just gotta see how I mean, Alabama's the clear-cut favorite for the West right now. Uh, right. you got to see how Ole Miss does, A&M, and obviously now Arkansas going forward. I mean, what was – A&M only won like 10-7 to 7 over Colorado. Yeah, That's bad. sad. Um, That's but think about this one, man. Here's how, here's how Arkansas feels to me, and I know you're, you know a lot of Georgia fans ain't going to tell you this. To me, that feels like a huge trap game for Georgia. Georgia right. cannot overlook at this game. I don't care if it's at home or not. Do not overlook this game. Sam Pittman is sneaky. Okay. And uh, that game is – the reason it's such a trap game, you got Arkansas, then have to go to Auburn right after, oh, and then man. Kentucky, which Kentucky's not amazing, that's a, that's but a, that's it could be second stretch, right? It's kind of a deep stretch there. Actually, we can look at the four games. because right after Kentucky's Florida. I know we get our bye week before them, but still. Right. The Arkansas we're, we're talking about for, tough. for Georgia, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, we all know we all know that, that Kirby's got a little bit of an issue playing West teams at, you know, the opposite stadium. So he, <laughs> there's a good chance he could be overlooking that Arkansas. Hey, you, know, about to what, you know, um, they said something at the end of the Iron Bowl in 2019 um, when Bo Nix was taking a knee on Alabama. They said, uh, Brad Nessler said something like, we said earlier this wasn't a field of dreams for anyone really since coming in 30 years. They, they like celebrated 30 years of Jordan Hare. But look, man, like I've been saying, you can say whatever you want to about Auburn, which they're, they're looking okay, but obviously uh, – at least I think they're on the level of Penn State right now, at least for this season, where it's like, yeah, this could be a fair matchup. But, I it mean, I, I just – regardless of how the season goes, when it comes it, – and I'm sure as a Georgia fan you would agree, especially because we got them at Jordan and Hare this year, you know, those are – I mean, regardless of the season, Auburn just plays their best against them, and they look like a national brand. It's weird. But it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, that is the one thing we have going for us. Yeah, we got to play at Jordan Hare this year. But I think it's because it's not a, a in-state <laughs> rivalry like it is with y'all. We yeah. don't have an issue beating Auburn most of the time. My grandmother actually told me this once, uh, but she said many years ago, Penn State played Auburn in the Outback Bowl and whooped their butt. Auburn complained that they had to play in the mud. Joe Paterno said it was raining on both sides of the field. That's true. <laughs> That's all. There you go. Uh, I forgot she she told me that a couple weeks ago when we were talking about that that Auburn Penn State game that's coming up. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. Friday. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna go over this, like you know, picks and everything. <laughs> yep. I got a feeling Auburn's gonna wear them out. Penn State. Yeah. There's. I don't know, man. I yeah. that Auburn hasn't played anybody, but. It's the same as Georgia and, and, and Bama. When you see your team put up 60-something points week after week and not let up any touchdowns, you're feeling good. And, I mean, it's not an easy task no matter who you play. I don't have it in front. I don't – I, I want to talk. <laughs> Florida State is 0-2 to start the season. and They should have know, been 1-1, let's be real. They should. They should have. And what I see is – 
their defense, like, like they're decent in terms of like, okay, they played Notre Dame close. They lost by a field goal. No big deal. Give them credit <laughs> at home for keeping it close like that against Notre Dame and holding on. Yeah. Oh, and one. Okay. Jacksonville state, you would think they go in there and I don't want to pick the big score. Cause they're not like, but, but they should win it kind of huge, like a 31 to 17. Maybe you squeak by 14 points. Cause I, I know they're still trying to build an identity with Mike Norvell, but man, they're Owen two and they lost by a field goal again. <laughs> Practice. Well, here's the question, though, man. I think that really says more about how bad Notre Dame is. Oh, yeah, it might, but I mean. Has Notre Dame looked depressive to you at all this year? No, no. And, and again, and they, for teams, it's – Yeah. <laughs> they beat the same amount as Jacksonville State did Florida State. That's like if this week UAB played Florida and Florida beat them by three points. You don't think us Georgia fans are dying laughing? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. But um, uh, let's see. What what was Florida State's record in 2017? Because I'm going to tell you something right now. Um, I'm I'm trying to fi- find article. I'm seeing articles. And these are all the way back from September of 2017. But the, each headline's yeah. like Florida State starts 0 and 2 for the first time since 19, 1989. So a couple years ago, for the first time in nearly three decades, they started out 0 and 2. And now here they are a couple years later, they're 0 and 2. And Florida State they, finished 7 and 6, by the way, in 2017. 15? Uh, you or said 2017, 17, correct? I did, yeah. Yeah, they they their conference they were three and five overall they were seven and six, so they still ended up making a bowl game. See, correct. They gotta get some good wins. They got. I think there's no room for error. They have to win against Wake Forest this Saturday. Then they gotta go and try to beat teams like Louisville and Syracuse. They just need a couple wins like this. They could. They got. They're gonna lose to Clemson. Miami might get them. I think Florida gets them. If they take those three losses, right? You add three more. Yeah. But if they win out outside of that, they could fit. They could still have time for like a seven and five type of year. Well, but there's no reason they together. can't turn it around and beat a team like Miami. Miami looks just as bad. That's fair. Um, I would love, 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 love for them to turn around and beat Florida at the end of the year. Right. Nothing would make that here. <laughs> I don't think it'll happen. See, and, okay, I thought Mike Norvell seemed like the guy that was going to turn it around. They had Mackenzie Milton. Mackenzie Milton, I think, got hurt, didn't he, in that game? Yeah. And they had to go with someone else. So they they have a couple key injuries, it looks like. And, I mean, it's just insane what's happening with Florida State. Because when I was watching that Notre Dame game the other night, last week, I, I looked at it and I said, you know what? Florida State might win this game. It's looking like that. And Notre Dame won, but I still looked at it and I said, they competed on that field. This team well, I has, has a goal game. this year to do something, and they could run the table just a little bit, yeah. right? Not for, like, the playoffs, but I'm like, they they might make a pretty good bowl game. They might have a good record at the end of it. Then they lost on Saturday, and I said – Nope. <laughs> I was wrong. Just a quick quick Madden update, man. I'm taking a huge risk here. I just pulled Teddy Bridgewater out, put in Will Greer. Who are you play? Is it the Panthers? Yeah, I'm using Panthers versus Seahawks. I'm getting destroyed. Um, oh, no, man. I picked Florida State to beat Notre Dame, and I almost, I almost got that yeah. one right. And uh, I think it really says how bad both of the programs really are. Um, Notre I don't Dame, even, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> that they do special this year. Yeah. Um, who did Georgia, Georgia just played who on Saturday? The UAB Blazers. You guys, yeah. guys open up conference play. You guys open with South Carolina. We got yeah. some interesting games. I mentioned the Auburn Penn State, uh, Central Michigan at LSU. LSU's not that great. Central Michigan, I don't even know where they're at right now, but that could be an interesting. 
it, it could be interesting. Um, Can I say something real quick about the South Carolina game? I'm sorry. Fun fact about this Georgia South Carolina game: you guys lost to them at home two years ago. That's not fun. But the fun <laughs> fact: um, Georgia is a 30 point favorite. That is the most we've ever been favored against an SEC opponent. Y'all are thir- 30 points. Oh, 31. Look, it jumped. But yep. still, like that's. <sighs> Georgia's never been that much of a favorite against an SEC. It's opponent. uh. What's JT doing? Is he is he going to be okay this week? So, uh, um, Kirby had his press conference today. He still said uh, JT's still taking it day by day. Okay. Um, they said he's looking a lot better. He's throwing a lot more now. The cool news is is Tyke Smith and Darnell Washington both are out of their boots. So okay, that's good. That's improved. He so said they might, they might be doubtful for this week, but the week after they're definitely going to play, which poor Vanderbilt at that point. Um, but, yeah, man, it's it's looking like we still don't know what's going on with JT. Um, he did address the whole quarterback controversy. <laughs> there is none. Um, <laughs> it's JT and the rest of them unless he's hurt and it's Stetson. Right. Well, that was kind of the question was – that's how it was kind of worded was, hey, if JT doesn't play, is Stetson the yeah. guy or is it going to be one of those where you bring in Bra- uh, Carson and, yeah. and give him some reps too? And he kind of I said, was, oh, it's, it's day by day. So that kind of tells me Stetson's our number two. I was on the phone last night with a good friend of mine who – um he was on YouTube for a while. He went by UGA boy, Ugga boy, whatever. I don't know if you've been around and you probably know him. I won't give his actual name out, but we like – we talk and – and all that, uh, but we were talking on the phone last night about the quarterback situation, and he just said he, – he practically was like anybody but Stetson, but he likes guys with experience, and at least Stetson had that last year. And and I just – I asked him, and I don't remember exactly what he said, but I'll ask you, man, what about Brock Vandergriff? I mean, do you give, do you give the freshman a chance? Because, like – it hasn't worked out with inexperienced guys, has it? I mean, well, here, here's the issue, man. All right, so I don't know if you saw my my video before the kickoff when I just went off losing my mind hearing that Stetson yeah. was getting to start. Um, <laughs> had I ate my crow on that one? What I, the I hell? Was, there was there's nothing. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing. I mean, Kirby made the right call, whether I'm mad about it or not. Carson went in there. We realized Carson's just not ready. You yep. know he's got more talent than Stetson, but he's not ready. Brock, when I went to the G Day game, Brock, it was it was weird, man. It was kind of like I'm sure you had this um, feeling when you watched your your. Remember when Tua was a freshman? Um, In Alabama, like six, yeah, yeah. You remember? <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, you you remember yeah. when uh, y'all had y'all spring game and everyone's excited to see this Tua kid? Yeah. The atmosphere when Brock came in, it, it honestly felt like the whole game changes. The chain, the the game sped like up. Like y'all were ready to go, right? Yeah. It, well, the game was just faster. Like he's so quick. Yeah. Quicker, right. I got that with Tua a couple years ago. Here's the problem. Uh His first drive, he fumbles the ball because mm-hmm. he doesn't have any connection with the center. Okay. There was a misread. It looks like him and his wide receivers weren't on the same queue. Like a lot of his most explosive plays was him taking off. Right. Well, we don't want to be pigeonholed like Florida is now to where it's like, well, Emory's there. We know he can't throw it past five yards. Just make sure he can't <laughs> run out of the pocket. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So I get it. You give the kid experience, he's going to be a great backup. Because yeah. I'll tell you right now, as a, as a Georgia fan who watches recruiting very closely, our next starting quarterback comes in next year. Oh, Gunnar Stockton isn't going to be our starting quarterback. Brock will be the backup, and Carson will be gone. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's um, the real deal. And see, though, that's like – that's another thing I was I was talking about with um, uh, my friend was uh, that, you know, he likes the, the recruiting at the quarterback position, and JT gives him a spark, and now he's going to be – he, like – you could probably go ahead and take a guess if all things go his way. And if he has that kind of year this year, which it looks like it, he's going pro. Like he's, oh, out. Yeah. he's, he's like, I'm, I'm going to the NFL. Thank you. Kirby smart and Georgia. Bye. Yeah. So now you need a new guy. Well, like 
I, I, I'm kind of like, like Gunnar Stockton's coming in, Carson back. Like you have all these talented guys. You're going to be in a position like, what do we do now? Like, wh- who do we gotta, go with? I think you got to kind of realize that, okay, look, our chances for a national championship next year yeah. is going to lower. Right. Drastic. We can get, we, yeah. We can get this Gunner kid to start just like we did Aaron Murray. And by his third year, hopefully we're championship caliber again. That's kind of what you got to do, man. You got to eat the bullet eventually because now you have no quarterback experience because Stetson will be gone too. And let's be honest, Stetson's not winning a natty. I don't care what team he's put on. Right. He could be in Alabama right now, and Alabama would not be number one in the nation. Oh, I, that would kill me. Oh, my God. And, and look, man, it's not like he's a bad person. Like, you see, right. he's, he's a great guy. And then the throws he had last week were, were okay. The receivers had to stop and come back to him. But the receivers were wide open. It's not like he did something special. Brock could have made that throw. Carson could have made those throws. JT yeah. definitely can make those throws. But uh, yeah. and we've seen we've seen Stetson in, in game time. I mean, you'll hear Georgia fans all the time, like Chess will do it all the time. Like, oh, we were beating y'all at halftime with Stetson. Yeah, but Stetson can't hold a lead against a good defense. He's not that guy. He's another yeah. – he's got the same problem Jake Fromm had. He's not going to win you a game, but he'll just make sure he's not the reason you lose. And with JT, it's opposite. So that's we, – we have to get JT back for these serious games. You do we, because, like, you could – okay. Um, UAB is not a bad program. There's a lot of people that, uh, that you know, look at um, UAB – you know, I don't know if you knew this, but you know their their um, program was kind of down a few years ago. Like they didn't have a program a few years ago, and, and they struggled. So a lot of people, you know, they cheered for them. They brought them back. Everyone's loving UAB. So they're not a bad team. But like for Georgia's level, like they just have to step it up a bit. They just have to. Um, I mean, it's the same thing, like. Yeah, people have their indifferences about him, but Uncle Lou says it all the time, and he's right. When you play that kind of opponent, all you can do is blow them out, same as what y'all did to Mercer. And it's not that they're a bad program or you want to make fun of them, but like you're saying, it's a different caliber. Yeah. Um, Let me see. I want to share this here. So – this is from Dog Nation. I don't. How do you Georgia fans honestly feel about the people at Dog Nation and the stuff they put out? So, all right. So, Dog Nation <laughs> is the news for, for the Stetson Bennett thing, right? For last right. week. Dog Nation is really good at getting. Like, if I want to look up something to see if something's true, like let's say Chess calls me and is like, "Hey, did you did you hear Darnell's back?" Yeah. Well, it's Chess. I'm gonna take it with a grain of salt and let me do some research for I believe him. Right. Right. I can go on Dog Nation, and if Dog Nation says it, it's real. Dog Nation, though, Georgia can do no wrong. And it's if you ever watch uh, Dean Leggy, who's the main guy for Dog Nation, okay, you have a better time watching paint dry. Ashley lost. Yes, the Big E. Oh, he beat him. Oh, heck yeah. He beat Orton. He beat Orton. But then Big E come out there and cast you sin. That's Biggie. awesome. Woo! Sorry about that. No, you're good, man. My my grandparents and I watched WWE, and let's just say we're not huge fans of Bobby Lashley. And Big E came out tonight and took him out. Anyway, back to this quarterback situation. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, so this is okay. So the title of this article is where is it? JT Daniels injury definitely improved. Right. Georgia quarterback room remains unsettled. Um, no kidding. Because otherwise we wouldn't be talking about this. You want to know the truth, Ballard? I mean, yeah. They're deciding right now, do we even have to play JT? That's all they're doing. Right. I'm telling you, they're going to beat them just as bad, if not worse, than they just did, did UAB. So why play them anyway? We right. all know JT is going to win. For Heisman. He wants the national championship. Right. So I, mean, I, I think it either way. It'll yeah. Win. Think about it this way. It's about if, if I punched you in the arm and then like, Three days later, you're like, ah, it's still a little bruised. That's about how JT's feeling. I guarantee you he can go out there and throw seven touchdowns against South Carolina right now. But do you want to play him is what they're trying to figure out. Right. Um, this says Bennett would seem to be in line for the start if Daniels can't 
go. Smart was asked, Kirby Smart, was asked if redshirt freshman Carson Beck, who was 4 of 10, passing for 88 yards with a touchdown and a pick six interception, would stay involved. And there's a quote where Kirby Smart said, you have to take it day by day, so I can't answer that because I don't know what JT will be able to do in terms of volume and reps. Sure, I'd love to be able to keep Carson involved, but I don't know where those reps are going. Okay, so part of this I look at what Kirby said, and I'm like, okay, fair. You don't know what it's going to be like with JT. You got to work with them day by day, see where it goes, see if you can get them some reps. Then he says, I'd love to be able to keep Carson involved, but I don't know where those reps are going to go. And then right. he said, it's hard to prepare a three-quarterback. So he made he made some pretty interesting points um, in ways. But ultimately, I just, I, I, man, you know, it's – there's there's not a perfect answer. But if, well, here, Georgia, point, but, but, if there's anything, don't do let, it. Let's say y'all were a little ding, dinged up, right? Yeah. Let's say Bryce Young had a, a toenail issue. Oh, God. And you're playing Vanderbilt that week. <laughs> Right. Do you even let him go out there with the toenail? No, we, put, we need to put Tyson in either Tyson or Milro, whoever. Yes. What's up? Uh, is this actually Uncle Lou? There's no way. Good morning, everyone. Uncle Lou here. Uh, yeah, change your name, Jacob. What the hell? <laughs> What's up, buddy? Uh, just I'm I know I noticed I was late to the stream, so. Yeah. Now Lou does good branding. He put a, he put his his logo on there. Yeah, I know that. I'm not trying to convince y'all that I'm Lou. I just did that as a joke. Of course, that's not the real Lou. He's a, Lou. He's always gonna come in with his logo. So. Yeah. Yeah, man. Man, this Ravens Raiders game is getting really good. Oh, I didn't even know that they were. Doing doing that anymore. Anymore. What's the score? Oh, Twenty-four seven. There we go. Latavius Murray, been a, eight yard rush. There's been a lot of. Which a lot of big hits this game, which you don't really see in the NFL at all, yeah. really. College, you see it sometimes. NFL, you don't really see it. Did you guys see? Uh, um, and and I hate to bring it up around Georgia fans, but I mean, you got to mm-hmm. give credit to Devontae Smith here. He caught. Yeah. He played the Falcons, and he caught oh, his Devontae first. Played. He caught his first touchdown pass. The same. Oh. Situation of the field as second and twenty. It just was a second and twenty six, but it was kind of special to see that. Now that you're not going to hurt my feelings with Devontae Smith. I have uh, literally one of my uh, drives. No, but I have Devontae Smith um, and Jerry Judy. (laughs) All of the Alabama first rounders have played good so far this week. Uh, Jalen, well, he's injured, but Devontae Smith, Mac Jones, Patrick Sertain, they're all they're all playing well. You know what's crazy is I don't have to say Judy might be my favorite Alabama receiver of all time. <laughs> yeah. Now, Alex Leatherwood has had a terrible night, but, you know, maybe he can get better. Here you go. This was the – look, it's like it's in Mercedes-Benz. It's just a little closer to the end zone. But look, you got to do this right now, brother? You got to do this? Going for the end zone. I mean – That's the same place, man. That's the same – Hurts to uh, Devontae Smith. Touchdown! Alabama wins! Uh. (laughs) Yeah, well, I mean, I'm happy for him. He's defeating the odds right now, so good for him. Hopefully, he. Yeah, I mean, everyone's talking about his weight and all that, so. Yeah, how's he defeating the odds? The man's a Heisman winner. Yeah, yeah I mean that's that that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I wish the best for him. Mac Jones played well today. As well. I mean yesterday as well. Uh, it wasn't his fault that they. You lost. know what the you know what my favorite thing about Devonte Smith is though is and he mentioned this in his Heisman speech. He said he was he's been doubted a lot because of his size and people told him he couldn't do it and he's too small, dude. This look, I, I know maybe when you get to the NFL it's another story, but. You know, he can play. He can catch the ball. He might not be the most lean type of guy, but it works. Now, <laughs> now the one and, thing and he I doesn't don't let like, the, he doesn't let the doubt get to him. 
Now, the one thing I don't like is how people are pl- comparing him to, Sean, to, to um, Deshaun Jackson, where he plays nothing like Deshaun Jackson. So they're not They're not even close to similar. Yeah, but I guess people are saying it maybe because we're both small receivers, they're, but it doesn't make sense. Right. Oh, Henry Ruggs. Oh, that's another Alabama wide receiver. Oh, uh, Ruggs is – he's just got 50, great speed on him. He's called a 50-yard uh, pass. What's up, Hokey? Well – Dude, I got breaking news out of Blacksburg. What happened? What? Um, James Mitchell's out for the season. Ooh. So, really? Yeah. yeah, he has to have knee surgery. They still haven't released what happened to him, but he has to have knee surgery. That's all I know. The tight end, right? Yeah. You know, yeah, he's a good. Him. He's a really good tight end too. He's he's got yeah. great size and hands. No, it's one a, thing. It's I will... a tough loss for you. No, yeah. one thing about. Alabama players. There used to be a lot of Alabama players that turned into bust in the NFL, and we don't really see that anymore with the new Nick Saban players. They're all stars, pretty much. Hey boys, I might I might hop back on here in a few minutes. Okay. All right, I'll be back. That's a that's a huge difference between the old Alabama players because you old Alabama players you always seen them be bust in the NFL, but the new ones they're all becoming future stars and all that. So. Yeah. Oh my God, Alex! See, this is the one Alabama player that's been playing horrible. The one first rounder, Alex Leatherwood. He needs to change something. I'm not. I'm not very impressed. I, I'm not impressed with the Raiders O line in general. But you know, I, I I have watched film and I do kind of notice when Leatherwood's in there, and it seems like he's a little bit slow. He doesn't really hold on to his blocks long enough uh, when he is out there, which. I mean, he was really great. He was phenomenal at Alabama. He was a key blocker uh, last season and, and even years prior. So I, I don't know of, if it's just nerves or I don't know what's going on, but, the, you know, they got to help him get in check, man. Yeah. He's yeah. the main focus of the um, Alabama natty picture, him holding he up is. the is. Him so, and – uh, Dickerson were two key linemen. Now, last year. Oh yeah, Dickerson, now, Dickerson's playing great. He played great versus the Falcons. He's he's with the Eagles, right? Well, I said against the Falcons. Eagles played Falcons this weekend. No, he's I, he's with he's with the Eagles. He's blocking yeah, he's Jalen Hurts. The, yeah, he's with the Eagles, but the Eagles played against the Falcons. I said he played right, right, well. Right. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, Najee Harris has been decent, but I think he can get better. He, he's not really, I guess, first-round pick material. He didn't play like that. Yeah. Not even a – you know, I'm just going to be honest. If I, I would have picked Travis Etienne over Najee Harris. But that's just my opinion. Jalen Waddle's actually injured right now. He was playing great in the preseason, and now he's injured, just like last season. Now, you know what's – now, Mac Jones is playing great. You know who cost the Patriots the game? Who? A uh, former Alabama running back, Damian Harris. So they're like running the clock out, you know, like 40 seconds, something left, like that left in the game. Well, it wasn't 40 seconds, but it was they're running the clock out so they could kick a field goal at the, like, they're at the eight yard line, 10 yard, whatever. And Damian Harris actually fumbled and threw away the game for the Patriots. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, oh, we got a tie ball game at 24 with the Ravens and the Raiders. Yeah. 344 left. Yeah, Christian okay. Barborn, he's not getting that much playing time right now. Maybe it's to still develop. I don't know what's going on. No, I think he's I think he's still developing. Um, I I myself didn't really expect him to be a, a starter right away for um, uh, for the. Patriots. I figured it would take him a while, but I wouldn't be surprised, man, if you gave him some time. Maybe they give him a chance to to be a lead guy for the defense halfway through this season. 
you know, just being honest, I would have drafted him in the first round. And Alabama would have broken the record. But that's just me. I you know, I, I'm going to be on. I, I'm not doubting Joe Tryon. And I really I haven't heard much great stuff from him lately. But I, I remember sitting on here. Um, hey, what's up, John Ivory? The man that drops the beats for Touchdown Alabama Magazine. What's going on, man? Roll Tide. Yeah, I, I gave you a wrench, man. Um, <laughs> but getting back to the Buccaneers real quick. Um, so we drafted Joe Tryon out of Washington. Yeah. He's a defensive edge. Now, he's not bad, yeah. but he should have been a day two guy. The, the problem wasn't necessarily who he took. Well, actually it was. The, the thing was, and I said this when I was live for the first round of the draft, and I was talking with my uncle and some other people. Uh, I think Sippy Sports Show was there, and I'm like, is this and I'm like, is this guy worth it? And they all agreed with me, no. And it it's not that we took him, but that we didn't take some other guys. I, I'm trying to remember who was on the board. We had Barmore that they could have took. There was um uh, taken there was another Campbell. key guy that still didn't go. I think Campbell would have really helped with how bad your uh, DBs are now. Hold on, I'll find who I'm thinking of. Yeah, you know how you were talking about how bad the Buccaneers secondary is. Yeah, that kind of means you should have drafted Tyson Campbell. Tyson Campbell out of Georgia, I think, would have worked. Um. Had a bar, so Barmore was there. Yeah, Jeff. Um, I would have gone with like Asante Samuel. We could have Aziz Ojalari, dude. I would have took felt, him. That guy would fell too far. Now, I don't think Leatherwood was personally at first round pick material. I think he's more of a day mm -hmm. two. Ronnie Perkins out of Oklahoma. I mean, trust me, dude. There were quite a few other guys out there that could have been drafted instead of Joe Tryon. And, again, I'm not throwing the player under the bus. I'm not trying to do that. But there are a couple other guys out there that I just think are more talented and more beneficial for the defense. I think yeah, the best I available for what they were going for, for some pass rush and some interior, would have been Barmore from Alabama, in my opinion. Yeah, and another guy who I think was day two. I think the Raiders reached for Alex Leatherwood. I think he's more day two. He was one of the top offensive tackles in this draft class, and you're saying yeah, he true. should have been day two? Offensive tackles go round one, and I think he was built I, – I, I'll say I think he went where he should have, and it definitely oh. helps the Raiders O-line. That's well, stupid. actually, not. I mean, not what we're seeing <laughs> now. But okay, now, now I I would probably agree. Yeah, they they kind of reached up for him. But <laughs> at first, I thought it was an okay pick, but now it seems like they reached because well, he's not playing that well right now. He's had way too many holding calls tonight, which that's something he, str he always struggled with at Alabama, didn't he? Holding. Um. Yeah, a, a couple times. I mean, when you look back at and, and Alabama, they get penalties, right? And mm -hmm. they had some this past weekend. Nick Saban was pretty t pissed off about, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah with, with holding, I mean, Alex Otherwood, as great as he was at Alabama, he still struggled with some holding calls. I think he th there were times it seemed like he did a little bit too much. But I mean, he wasn't bad. He was great for a, a offensive lineman. I do think he can get better if he's, you know, uh, under the right coaching. He has a bright future as a top tackle. I think if you just give him some time and you have the right type of like just mind for an offensive line coach or whoever to work with him. Maybe he should have stayed another year in college to develop more because he doesn't seem ready. You know, I think he was a senior, um, well, and everyone was, had the no. ex everyone had extra year rule. Yeah. I would not have blamed him if he had come back to develop a little bit more. Seems like you should have done that, and I mean, I mean, maybe you know this is his first game. I think you have to give him more time before you throw him under the bus. Right. I mean, this game's not even over. We're already talking about him being a bus, but 
He doesn't look that good so far. Oh my God, Lamar Jackson. Oh my. Oh, this is going to be a. Oh. 30 yards for Lamar Jackson. Raiders really messed up on that play. Ah. Oh, yeah. Ballard, I meant to ask you about this. What's up? Do you have any thoughts about uh, Clay Houghton getting fired? Um, why? 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 I mean, okay. If they're that upset, what, are, what is uh USC hasn't done good this season, have they? They lost to Stanford. Um, uh, I I don't know if Stanford I would have fired Stanford. him for the Stanford loss. I mean, he was one and one. He loses to Stanford, and they fire him. Look, he's not a good head coach, Ballard. I mean... Well, no, no, no. And, I, I agree with that, but I mean... And it's not just a loss. He got, had put, USC had Ballard. potential for the Pac-12 this year. Ballard, they got, no, they they lost that potential. They got blown out by a team projected to win three games. Going That's into the season is what I meant. I I at least thought they would take a step forward with Keaton Slovis but, and everybody. Well, me too, but... Um, USC, they're much more talented than they played like. They and another reason is because he lost the Pac-12 title to a much less talented Oregon team last year. That's another reason why he's getting fired. Yeah. If he won that Pac-12 title last year, he probably wouldn't be getting fired. He chose Keaton Slovis over JT Daniels. Yeah. So, I mean, he had the 60th ranked recruiting class in 2018 at one of the best programs in college football. Right. So, plenty of reasons to fire him. Looks like Dan Mullen's going, heading on the bus or whatever to USC. Really? I, that's my prediction. Dan Mullen to USC? Yep. Right he's not leaving season. Florida. I'm sorry. These whole NFL rumors and everything, he's not leaving. And he's going like in a great direction, I think. I think if – now, now, okay, I would agree with our guy, Celine Driver, though. They do need to get rid of uh, 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 Todd Grantham. <laughs> that, that defense is just well, getting worse. Well, that, first of all, that defense had plenty of NFL players on it. And um, <laughs> they're s- severely underperforming. This was supposed to be one of the most talented defenses in college football, and now it's one of the worst. Um, and s- you can't use the excuse that it's an offensive game, and uh, you can't stop a great offense. I'm not gonna. Well, I'm not even gonna try it, dude. Just there's stop. been there's <laughs> been plenty there's been plenty of great defenses who have stopped great offenses. Look at Georgia, Clemson, Iowa, Clemson, even did Alabama. It to Bama. Clemson did Alabama. it to Bama a couple years ago with two with Tonga Valoa. Even even Alabama sure sure stopped a great offense in the Natty. So you can't Which use year? The, it's an offense. You talking about uh with Fields? I'm t- talking about last year. Twenty four yeah, points we, to Fields. That's not that's not bad at all. Yeah, I, I he, that he, that he should have maybe gotten them to like thirty something. You know what I mean? He should have gotten, gotten them to the forty. Should have gotten yeah. them to the forty. But in that's before, and I think what's going, what's happening is I think defensive coordinators are finding out why offenses have been scoring so many points. I think they're catching on to that, and that's why defense is coming back. Do you agree with that or no? Yeah, in a way, I would agree. Yeah, because it's not like you can't say offenses are getting worse now. That would just be ridiculous. How could offenses be getting worse? They're not. I just I mean, see, and that's the thing, too, that I've been talking about this week is like, okay, we saw a, a lot of um, just D. De- I just think some defenses are stepping up this year. It's not necessarily the offense. I just think there's some more defense this season, honestly. 
Yeah. In ways. I, on Tiger, I called into the Tiger Basket show, and when I said I was going to make the playoffs and win the Big Ten, people took it the wrong way. Right. Because because they were all talking about how um, I didn't put Alabama in the playoffs, but how Alabama will blow out Iowa. That's not how the playoffs work, really. Right. Um, I mean, Alabama, I was a much easier schedule. They're not going to play Bama unless Bama goes makes the playoffs. And since I have Bama at 11-1 and losing the SEC title, I think they're going to miss it. Justin Tucker, and it's money. Now the Raiders got to go down and score. Yeah, here's a big run here. It wasn't for a score, but Mariota, man, he is good. Look at this. Wow, that's one play. Well, no, I mean, he was even good with the Titans. Um, he was great at Oregon. He was a Heisman winner. He's talented. Yeah, he was, Yeah, and that's why he got benched and traded and released. I don't know. I don't. I just think there was something that, obviously, for for the Titans, Ryan Tannehill, which I'm not taking anything away from him, but something about him over Mariota. Let's let's switch it up a bit. You know, I mean. Uh, but I will. I think Mario deserves a starting job. Just I agree. Being, I fully agree. But I mean, the Raiders are using him as a gadget player right now. Yeah. Which, What's up, Nate? What's up, guys? Not much. <clears throat> um. What, what are we talking about? Whatever. We're talking about man. how Michigan. We talking about how Michigan. We talking about how Michigan's going to lose. Lose the rest of their games to go two and ten. I'm ready. I'm ready for college basketball to get back. Eh. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Y'all keep guess. talking. Yeah. I'm gonna go uh, take care of something for a second. George's. When will they be good at college basketball? At one point. Well, I don't. You're just. You were just joking about that losing wherever you said. <laughs> yeah, I was just joking. <laughs> I said we were. T- I said we were talking about how Michigan's gonna go finish the season two in time. <laughs> um. Yeah, that would be horrible. Um. And that would get Jim Harbaugh fired. Yeah. <laughs> Man, what do you think about Clay Helton firing? I think it was a good firing. I mean, too little, too late. They shouldn't fire. They should. They should have fired him. Him, uh, like two years ago. They should have um, fired him. At least in my opinion, that's just what I would have done. Yeah. Uh, get Dan Owen, get James Franklin, get Matt Campbell. Somebody come over. And, and plus, uh, Lil Fickle's an option too for USC. That worries me. Yeah, that's true. Luke Fickle, you talking about out of uh, uh Cincinnati? Yeah. And, yeah, USC uh, Koji Cannons has Luke Fickle on it. I'm worried about that. Ooh! Oh, Raiders are in field goal range now. What a dime. Well, how far into the game are we? Oh, here we go. Hold on. Spike. Oh, wait, all right, my, oh I forgot I'm ahead of you, aren't I? Oh, I don't know. I don't ha- I don't actually have it on. I'm at like seven play seconds. Play, 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 play. You know what USC should do? What? Hmm. They should go out and they should. Uh, <laughs> they should hire Pete Carroll again to come save their uh, uh, their um, program. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean he probably is still a little bit, a little, bit, a little old, but actually, age doesn't well, matter. That was, that was a joke. That was a joke. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm turning whoa, the game whoa, on on my phone. They're kicking the field goal now. Hold on. Hold on. Well, they got seven. They got seven seconds here. Daniel Carlson was at Auburn. He I would have ran another, but that this is it, dude. It. They got to tie it. It's I'm not going to spoil it. Yards. Hold I on, already I'm know what it. happened. I'm going to call it. I know the what snap. happened already. It's down. The kick is up. He made it. Two seconds left. He made it. I don't care that he. Well, yeah, he made the field goal, but I still would have ran tied. another play. I would have ran another three. play. Well, they probably had no who, timeouts. Who, right? What team tied it? Raiders. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Josh Raiders Jacobs are, are now tied uh, at twenty-seven with the Ravens. 
Daniel Josh Carlson Jacobson. hit 55 yards, man. Yes. Josh, Jacob, Josh Jacobs is playing great. Josh Jacobs is having a good night. Yeah, he is. He's been running up and down. John Gruden might finally get be getting this team somewhere. <laughs> he did win a Super Bowl. How many uh how many Clemson and Georgia players is, do the Raiders have to have, by the way? <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean? They have to, like three different Clemson players in the the twenty yeah, nineteen draft or whatever. Really? Gonna, I, I bet you yeah. they squib this and take the two seconds off and go to OT. That's okay. That's probably their best bet. Well, I'm just gonna say they just made Let's a dumb see. decision. Nope. They're gonna make it be a touchback. That's kind of a dumb move, but Mm-hmm. Do you go to yeah. overtime? Do you go to overtime, or do you uh, do you throw a hail mary bomb? See if you can get it, get a playoff. Uh, overtime. Oh. Nah, you gotta go for the hail mary. I I think so too. NFL, and you gotta I give, you gotta this. try it, don't you? And the and the reason why is because NFL overtime is ridiculous. So if the Raiders get the ball first, they go down, and score, and they're gonna win. That's just how right. NFL overtime works. Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna spoil anything. I'd be fine with that because I'd be I'll fine call, with that I'll because you don't I don't like them. the Ravens. And they will take a knee, Jackson down, and they will use the two seconds they're going to OT. Mm, well, you, I, do, do, seven. I hate Bob, the Ravens, Bob, so I'm fine with it. Bob didn't get a death in commentary there. His knee was rubbing against the ground really hard when he kneeled, um, and oh he was God. walking off. <laughs> <laughs> and he was walking off the field very strange and hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, I, I hate NFL overtime. NFL overtime is stupid. <clears throat> uh why are ties still a thing in football? Shh. <laughs> Sorry. How do you feel about those Hokies? I'm proud of us. No. You know, I forgot his name, but. Hokey for life. Yeah. Raiders. Oh, I'm yeah. not going to say anything. I'm not saying anything. Disappointed we lost James Mitchell, but oh, happy in our performance. Oh, hashtag win for Mitchell. Yeah, okay. who's getting the ball in this overtime? I missed it. Raiders, 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 Raiders. Okay, they're gonna receive. They better score a touchdown. Oh no, uh, they're kicking off because Derek Carr's going out there. Uh, what do y'all think? You think they get stopped, field goal, or touchdown? Wait a minute. Wait, Derek Carr's a quarterback. What the hell was wrong with me? They better yeah. score a touchdown. I think honestly, I think they're gonna go down. I think they're gonna end it. Yeah, they better go. They better go down there and score a touchdown. I bet. I bet you. I, who want to bet that the what? Ravens give up a big bomb right now? <coughs> no, I think they're gonna run it down the Ravens' I'll throat and score. That's just me. All right. I mean, do y'all think I was a top four team? Because I really don't. But I think they'll make. I mean, I think they look good, and I keep them top ten. I don't know about top four yet. I I think they got a lot. The thing is, I think their schedule makes them a top four team in the final rankings. I don't think they're a top four team. I think there's four teams better than them. Probably five. Probably. At least they're in top five. They're not in top four. Here's the thing, though: if you're if you're a true college football fan. You need you need some shake up like this. You need teams like that yeah. to to have that kind of uh, attention or whatever for for a national standpoint. Um, like we need this, man. We got Iowa. We or, have, um, I mean, Bama, Georgia, but who else do we have? We ha- there's another Oregon. team, Oregon. There you yeah. go. Oh. It's been a little while for them uh, to be hey, that hey. that high. Ballad. It's been a while since Tech's been in the top 15. <laughs> yeah, man. You already know those Arkansas Razorbacks are going 12-0 and 0 this year. 
was oh, a loss to Georgia. <laughs> well, out with a loss to Georgia. Oh, shoot. I forgot that we play him in the regular season. All right, 11-1. <laughs> No, you uh, already said 12 and 0, so I guess no, you, no, no, you get no, your no. loss. No, stop, stop. You get stop, your loss. Stop, stop, stop. That'd be tall. Alabama goes 10 and 2. We're not going 10 and 2. All right. right. But if I had to rank the top four teams by who I think the best four teams are, I got to go one Georgia. I got to go. Well, that, this is not my poll. I think Alabama should be one in the poll. But I Derek think Carr is going to take the snap, throw it, complete. Tripped up, not the first. I'm not I mean, sure. I would, who's 89? I would, I'm sold on them, but I'm not. I don't think it's 100% that they're going to make the playoffs. Oregon, yeah. yes. I would, I still think they could do something where they might not make it. Yeah. But Oregon, I'm 100%. They'll make the playoffs. I got you. And, I can't, and I'm happy about a pack. Do you, do you see that Fine Bob said how State's path to college playoff is very complicated? It's over, is what it is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm listen, sorry, the but they, Iowa, uh, Ohio State is not that great. I told you. Yeah. Val, you were talking about all year how Ohio State was going to come and win the Natty. Don't even. I never try said to that. that. No, you Michigan said that. Michigan's one of the East. But at least, at least, oh, at least oh, the first oh, look at this. Don't say oh, a word. I got this. Uh, my Second bad. and my 12 bad. for the Raiders from the 34 yard line. Derek Carr, pump fakes, pressured throws. Great throw there. Hunter Red throws stake in. Wow. Cuts across, found some openings, slid down past 40. Sorry about it. that. That was just a live reaction. Nah, I don't. I don't care, man. I really don't care. But I want to see. Chess got mad at me. Chess got upset at me because I kept spoiling the plays <laughs> for Georgia. <laughs> for, and I had a, and I had a bad reaction to the Georgia pick six. And he was like, he was like, why would you spoil the play? Because I was like, no. Why what does Derek Carr go under sitter every play? That's John Gruden's offense. Look out. Kenyon Drake can fly. Where's the kicker? That will not be caught. Touch will not be caught except by the NFL Draft Bus Committee. Huh. <laughs> hey, you know, it, it is overtime. I think if you want to help yourselves, if you're the Raiders, you got to take a sack to give yourself more room for the touchdown. Mm-hmm. Like Tua yeah, did. The, Take the sack on purpose. Yeah, that, are you being serious? He did that. He admitted it. <laughs> wow, that's one of the, if, if you really need that vow, that's one of the time. Really? <laughs> I think you should take a sack on purpose. <laughs> I mean, think of, I've he seen had it. Enough room, he had enough room to throw the ball away. Come on. He had enough time, too. Ravens are under pressure. Defensive coordinator for them is praying that they die. Under pressure. All the cell phones are out. Lights are on. Derek Carr. Leatherwood. The... I see Leatherwood out there. Leatherwood's out there. Three holding penalties tonight. Oh, my God. Derek Carr takes the snap. He gets rushed. Throws it out of bounds. <laughs> I could be a sportscaster too, Valor. You got competition, son. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Carr's going to take a snap. Pressure. Throws it away. It'll go out. <laughs> but here's the thing about Iowa. Maybe they're not a top four team right now. But do you think they get better where you, people say, I, I think this is one of the best four teams in the country? Maybe. Mm. I'm just looking at ESPN's FSPI. Oh! oh! Don't uh, say oh! Hold on. 
Jacob, I'm just going to remove you, buddy. I'll add you back in a second. It'll be fine. I want to see this. Derek Carr, shotgun formation, running back to his his left, throws it deep. Got a man. Oh, it's caught. Oh, my God. How the hell? Touchdown, Raiders. Wow. Edwards. Game over. Who Who's Edwards? Uh, oh, Brian I'll Edwards. He's, he's down. He's not down. He's down. He's down. That's not a touchdown. They're going to call that back. What? They're not going to call. Oh, my. That is controversial. Well, okay. Did the ball break the plane? Not even close. If you see it from the Still angle, I'm right now, not even close. Down, and I know now. Not- oh no, he's short. He is down at like the the two yard line. He's down. Still, oh no, still. that actually that could be the half yard line. Actually, uh, Bob, I think I woke up there. Bob, I think I woke up my neighbors. Oh my god! Dude. <laughs> oh uh, no! Yeah, why? I'm hey, joking. Uh, Hey, uh, I've never woken up my neighbors before, and I don't think I ever will because I live in a house. Well, you're lucky. Uh, hey, uh, hey, Jackson's he, even out, even Lamar Jackson's out there like congratulating everybody. They still have it. The game is not over. It's not. Here's what over. I think should happen in the next play. They're gonna hand it off inside to hey. Josh Jacobs. He's gonna power it in. Touchdown Raiders. Game over. Yeah, I, I bet think. you they're at. I think you you toss it to him or something and just have the O line block a hole for him. I think yeah. I, I think you're gonna hand it off inside. Th- hey, that was uh, a great play though. That was really good. Hey, do you know was that hey, who was who caught that? Remind me again. Do you know uh, Raiders? So I'm looking. Yeah, at, he was uh, short. They just called him short. I, I got into I'm, an argument. They're, they're now. They're gonna play. I got into an argument on BBD's channel last night with this guy who I think is an idiot. He said Georgia Tech would lose to Collins Hill, who's a high huh? school. Huh? He said Georgia Tech would lose to a high school team named Collins Hill. Okay. They're, they're not even nationally ranked, and they definitely lose to Mar- and they definitely wouldn't beat Marietta. So. Yeah. Um. Do you know? I'm looking at it right now, but for right now, the according to the ESPN's football power index, um, in between Ohio State and Michigan, currently right now, um, Ohio State is like, uh, fifty nine. All the trenches get between the trenches in this quarterback sneak. Carl, hold on. He is. Hold on. Just having my own talk. Short. <laughs> Am I allowed to talk now? <laughs> I was getting jealous now because Ooh. of my skills. He's it. He's got to be in. That's it for Derek Carr. Um, He's short. So, what I was saying is that House State has 59.8% to win. And Michigan has forty point two percent to win, so it's close. Ballard, you know, Currently. I think you're getting jealous of my sports casting skills, so you keep muting me. No, right? it's not that. I just I don't like spoilers. That's yeah. It. I, don't we, care. I was kind of, I forgot it's, about it's, that. It's kind of like a movie. Like I, 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 say, movie. I forgot about that. I won't say anything anymore. I, no, I, I really don't care. I don't even care who wins this game. I just love a good thriller like this. You know, this yeah. is yeah. crazy. Now, listen, how do you like the the uh, Hokies and the Bengals? That makes no sense, huh? How many is this teams? I mean, they're not even close to each other, really geographically. I live in West Virginia. I, we uh, don't have any pro sports teams here. Oh my. Goodness. Leatherwood. Hold on. I got, let's see. What are you doing? Oh, my God. Oh. Offside. Oh, Dad, gum it. That would have, that would have definitely been it. But I'm you said that was Leatherwood? Was that Leatherwood? I don't want to spoil anything, but 
What is Saban uh, teach you? Uh, yes, that was what that was leather wood. That was leather wood. Gosh. Talk about rookies, right? Rookie mistake. What you know he's, that term? He's not prepared for this game. He's not prepared. If you're gonna make a mistake like that late in the fourth in overtime, you're not prepared for this game. I can just tell. That just messes up the Raiders. Oh, see? Yeah. They had it. I bet this you gotta take a chance. I say you get a guy go like a little post route up to the corner of the end zone. I feel bad for the pressure if the lose this. Overthrown. He better hope the Raiders win this game. Because if they lose, he's gonna get so much hate. Right. Yeah. And they fought pretty hard in this game too. This is crazy. Maybe they score right here though. You never know. Right, we'll see. Question is, do they go for it on fourth and that goal? Now, if it's fourth and goal, you should go for the uh, bill goal. Okay. Just saying. <gasps> That's going to be picked. Picked. Oh, shoot. Is it picked? I'm not going to say anything. You can find out for yourself. I don't want to spoil anything. Okay. Derek Carr. I forgot to shut my mouth. Derek Carr throws it. <gasps> oh, it was pick. What the hell? What was that? That literally was like. I didn't want to spoil anything. That was probably one of the most unlucky interceptions you could throw where it's like it bounced off a helmet and it's like you hope that just wow. lands on the ground. I I knew I made a mistake when I started cheering. I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> That's well, crazy. Didn't want to spoil anything there. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I was like, oh, the moment I said pick, I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Let's see how the... <sighs> that is so fresh. The Raiders had the games in their hand. Oh, see, now the Ravens can come back and score. Let's just see. Jackson rolling out. Chase throws out of bounds. That was just an unlucky interception there, man, for real. Yeah. I mean, if I was a Raiders fan right now, you're in this. Hey, you know Raiders fans get crazy. Oh, yeah. They got to be, like, really pissed off. <laughs> I can't wait for their post-game reactions. And the sad thing about it is I have to delete mine about the Falcons-Eagles game. Now because you I, know what the Ravens what the Ravens can do because both teams have had possession. Well, actually, no. Who who started out? Did the Raiders have possession in overtime first? All right, let me tell you how NFL overtime works, and I hate it. And it's the worst thing ever. Basically, it's the first score. It's either the first touchdown or the first score after both teams get possession of the ball. Yeah. Field goal, yeah. they, the Raiders whatever. scored a touchdown right there. Even with the Raiders without getting a chance, they would have won the game. And it's just not fair, but that's just how the game works. Yeah. And the worst thing about it is that games can end in ties. And isn't that the worst thing about it? Y'all should have seen... Uh... My reaction to the Sweet 16 overtime yeah. shot or whatever. <laughs> or not even that. No, Alabama had hit a – had hit a um, – Game, a game time. Start. Overtime. You know what I'm doing? During this game, I'm going to look up ESPN and I'm going to go to the games next week. I know Auburn can stay playing, but I want to see all the games so we get a good look. 
the Black West Diamond. West yep. Virginia, Virginia Tech are playing. The out of May Black Diamonds. The Black Diamond Trophy. Uh, what was your, what's your name? Hokey for life. You think Virginia Tech's going to beat West Virginia? I live in West Virginia, so I hope we do because I'm not listening to that shit for an <laughs> entire year. All right. Oh, we okay. don't cuss on here no UCF, more. UCF, yeah. UCF plays Louisville on Friday night. That'll be good. Mer- All right. Hold Hopefully. On. Let me watch the story. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was so close. Not saying anything once again. Yee. I'm not going to lie. Um, I, thought that was a, I thought that was a fumble. Uh, anyways, we got Maryland, Illinois Friday night. Okay, good Friday night games. Nebraska, Oklahoma. Indiana, Cincinnati, West Virginia, Virginia Tech. Oh, Miami, Michigan State. Now, this was supposed to be a blow at the beginning of the year, but now it might actually be a good game. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh, shoot. Hold on. Third and seven. My bad. For Lamar. Come on. Didn't say anything. Did say anything. Third and seven. Lamar Jackson, pressure. Oh, he's sacked. Fumble. No, the ball's loose. Raiders got it. I, th- That's see, what you just saw, right? Ballard. I, I don't know. It's just in-game reactions that I'm used to. Sometimes I kind of forget I'm on a stream yard and 30 seconds ahead of everybody else on the TV. <laughs> you know what the Raiders can do now? They can they can technically take this into field goal position and kick it. They could kick yeah. it. Right they could. They could. They could run it down to maybe the twenty or thirty yard line. They're not going to do it. Kick a game winner. They're not going to do it, but they could literally kick like a thirty-five yard field goal, or whatever. Right now, I think he'd be stu- based on how the Ravens' defense has been tonight, man. I think he'd be stupid not to try a field goal. Yeah, I think they're probably going to run the ball. Good why would you risk? Yard. Why would you risk a turnover? Well, it is why a forty-four yard. Maybe not right converting now. or what? It is a forty-four yard field goal right now, so they're going to run 44. it, get some extra yards, make it closer. Yeah, that's what I do on Madden. <laughs> well, yeah, Madden, you don't fumble the ball. <laughs> well, you do, but Kenny not- and Dre got a couple. You know, I that's the one thing that's, about Madden. Like two or three that, right there is not enough. You know what the one thing is about Madden? I learned all these defensive adjustments somehow, and I basically became this amazing defensive player on Madden. And the reason why I found out defense adjustments is because I'd always throw like three to four yeah, picks every day. I had a bad habit of doing that. So, Seahawks team already lost to Northern Illinois. Uh, Nate, you think your team is going to two in week three as well? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> what do they actually do? Uh, I think they just Carlson's the out there to try to kick. Now, Ballard, re- reconsidering how we found out about Miami and how bad they are, they are. you think what? they still – Re- reconsidering the Miami Michigan State game because we found out Miami's not as good as we thought they were. Who do you think is going to win? Oh, crap. It might. It might be the Spartans. I mean, I think it. I think it'll be close, but I would. Well, hold on. Where, where's the game being played? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's being played at Miami. Yep, Miami. Miami will get. Oh, oh my God! Now. Oh shoot! Hold on. All right. All right, not saying anything. I'm done. I'm done. I'm muting you. Promise. Okay. 344, second and 14 here. I won't say anything. Okay. Here's the snap by the quarterback. Pressure. Throws a D. Got a man wide open. Touchdown, Raiders. Now, here's the thing. Jones. Who, who was that? Jones? Is that? 33-27, Raiders now, I don't win know in overtime. I, now, I'm just going to be real honest with you. I don't know who Jones is. <laughs> Was that? I don't. 
What if that was the Christian Jones, Alabama wide receiver from eight years ago? It's the only Jones I can think of because I know nobody. What, oh, I think it was probably Zay Jones, wasn't it? Um, It is. If I, I'll find him. Hold was on. It, was it either Zay Jones or Christian Jones? Probably one of those two. Zay like, Jones. It's Zay Jones. Yeah, Zay Jones. Number seven, right? Yeah, he's always been a career backup. Good player, but he's always been that backup receiver. Yeah. So well, that's, how, that's why I found – that's why I, I named Zay Jones. Well, they won. God, I'm, not, I'm just going to be honest. I thought, I thought he was throwing, that, throwing the ball away. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, I swear to you it looked like that. I, it might have been that he just didn't throw it far enough over the end zone and he got lucky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm, not taking, I'm not taking anything away from Zay Jones or anybody, but it did look like he was just going to throw it away with the yeah. way he just kind of backed out of the pocket. Yeah. That now, y'all hear about crazy. those 40? All right. Crazy thing here. 45 people at a Wisconsin football game were arrested on Saturday. <laughs> really? 40, actually, no, 45 kicked out the stadium, 32 arrested. What do y'all think about that? Drunk people? What did they do? I don't even know. I just read that. Well, I read that a couple hours ago. I'm looking it up. Wisconsin fans. All I remember is 45 people were ejected, 32 were arrested. Um, thirty-three twenty-seven. I'm gonna say Wisconsin football arrest. Yeah, forty. They eject forty-five people. Thirty-two. <laughs> I don't even know what happened, but I just read that earlier. I'm gonna go look, find out. Police say thirty of the thirty-two citations were issued to. Wisconsin students. The list included 30 citations for underage alcohol, out of possession, oh. uh, theft, and uh, <laughs> that's it. Why? Do they charge students with underage drinking still? I don't know. But why? <laughs> like, it's so random. <laughs> underage drinking. I, I didn't know you could get charged for that at football games. It's against the law. And I don't think it should be allowed at football games. But they still give it to the students, so I thought they would let it go most of the time. Whatever. Honestly, uh, they might be doing the right thing because it's against the law. So it's like... Thank God that game. I'm about, did, you drink, did you underage drink? What? I, I, what? Wait, I said, did you no. underage drink? No, I'm not stupid. Yeah. Dude, come on. Yeah, uh, you know. Ballard, you could admit it on the back, uh, a back room stream, Ballard. I've never took a sip of alcohol. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they're selling it to students at football games, shouldn't they get the concession stands in trouble instead of the students? I don't even know, man. Listen, I got to get up early. I got a long day with school tomorrow. Oh, don't end the stream, Ballard. I am. All right, make it a, a back room stream then. If you're going to end it. No. I mean, y'all can talk, but I got to get some sleep, man. I got to. I got school tomorrow. Uh, long day. So Okay. <laughs> All right. Y'all know what to do. Hit that thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Love you guys. <laughs> Jesus loves you. God bless. And as always, roll tide. See you later. Go dogs. Roll down tide.